Hey, you guys, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Come on in if you can, because tonight we're going to be talking about guardian angels. And not just about guardian angels, but I want to explain to you about your own guardian angel. Because what the spirit world tells me is that when we are first born here in this world, we are assigned a very special angel. You're assigned a guardian angel that watches over you through life. And what's really special is that your guardian angel is with you from the moment that you're born to the moment that you die. And what's so special about this angel is that this is your very own angel. Your guardian angel doesn't care about anybody else but you because everyone has their own guardian angel. So your mom has one, your dad has one, your sister and your brother have one. But your guardian angel is solely responsible for you. And actually, before you're born, your guardian angel spends a lot of time in heaven getting to know you and your life and what's going to happen in your life and all the things that are going to take place. So tonight, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how your guardian angel is protecting you. And first of all, I want to say hello to all of you who are here. I see Jill is here. I see Josephine is here. I see Sharon is here in Canada. Sharon, did you hear I'm coming to Canada? All the Canada tour dates are up on my website. I see Karen is here as well. I see Greenhouse Runner is here. I also see that Shay is here and Vivian is here. Oh my God, I love this. Shay just went through a, a psychic spirit awakening by accident. Well, listen, I'm glad that you're here. Listen, I get to tell you, we all have a psychic ability. We all have a way to connect with the other side. We all have a way to sense and feel our loved ones. And it's not just your loved ones, you guys. It's your angels. It's your spirit guides. It's your pets that have passed on. It's your loved ones that have passed on. You have a whole team in heaven that are watching over you. There has never been a reading that I've done where somebody doesn't have someone watching over them. What I want you guys to know is this, is that even when you don't sense and feel your guardian angel, even when you don't think your guardian angel is there, I promise you, your guardian angel is. So I'm going to talk to you guys all about how your guardian angel has been protecting you, continues to protect you, and how you can listen to your guardian angel. But before we do, I have some announcements to make, and that is, if you haven't checked, if you haven't checked, oh, Florida spelled wrong, but if you haven't checked my tour schedule, you guys, my wife is going to effing kill me. I am coming to so many cities and so many states to see you guys. Here's where you can come and meet me live and in person. I'm coming to the villages in Florida. I'm coming to Jacksonville, Florida, Melbourne, Florida, Tampa, Florida. Actually, Tampa, Florida is almost sold out. So if you want to come to that event, make sure you have your tickets. West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm coming to give readings in Worcester, Massachusetts at the Hanover Theater. I'll also be in Red Bank, New Jersey, Englewood, New Jersey, Sacramento, California, Cincinnati, Ohio. And I'm also coming to do two shows in Las Vegas. Peak Skills, New York, where I don't even know where the hell the Peak Skills are in New York, but somehow I'm coming there. Ashland, Kentucky, London, Ontario, Canada, Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, and Keene, New Hampshire. So this is where you can come and meet me live and in person where I'm going to be doing one thing, and that is giving readings and helping you connect with your loved ones on the other side. So if you can make it to Massachusetts, Florida, New Jersey, California, Ohio, Nevada, New York, Kentucky, Canada, well, all those places in Canada, or um, New Hampshire and New York, I forgot to say New York, make sure you have your tickets reserved, meetmattfraser.com, meetmattfraser.com. This is where you can meet me live and in person and where I'm going to be giving live readings up close and personal. And what I also want you to know is that if your city or state or country isn't on there, don't worry because there's another way that you can get a reading from me. So right here in this office, right here in this office, I do live online video readings. It's a video group reading where you're there with other people, but I read person after person after person after person. So all the readings that you've seen me do on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, how do you think that everyone got read? They joined the online group reading. It's only $22 to be a part of this event. But the sad part is, is that I can only allow a limited amount of people. And what I want you guys to know is that now that I'm going on tour, it makes it even harder because I can only do three online group readings per month. So December is already sold out. January is sold out. But I have February 10th and February 13th, and I think February 23rd available. So if you want to join me where I'm going to be giving live readings right here in this office, and you can hear from a loved one that had passed away, go to meetmattfraser.com and sign up. It's $22 to attend. You want to make sure that you're there because I can only read you if you're at a live event when I'm in your city or if you're right here in this office, live online. I don't do any private readings. 
All the readings that you see, everyone just paid $22 and you can as well. Make sure you have your spot reserved, meetmattfraser.com. But first of all, let's talk all about this. Your guardian angel, okay? Oh my God, thank you so much, Heidi. She goes, you're so uplifting. I can tell you, I love talking about this because, you know, this is a really good thing to know for anybody who's stressed, depressed, has anxiety, has worries, has fears. You have a guardian angel always with you. And, you know, a lot of you guys laugh. A lot of you guys joke. A lot of you say with me, Matt, I think that my guardian angel fell asleep on the job. I think my guardian angel doesn't care about me. I think that my guardian angel went out for a drink and never came back. But the truth is this, at the end of your life, when you pass away, hopefully not for many, many years, something amazing happens. You meet two people at the end of your life that you somehow know, but you're not sure how you know them. And that is your guardian angel and your spirit guide. And your guardian angel and your spirit guide actually show you all the ways that they have helped you within your life. So a lot of people think that your guardian angel is there to save you when you're about to get struck by a moving vehicle. But your guardian angel does a lot more than just intervene in those ways. And by the way, those are rare times when it's before your time that a guardian angel can come in and save you from a car accident that was supposed to be that was supposed to be a lot um, worse than it was or save you from injury or save you from harm. But your guardian angel is actually like your own like your very own guidance counselor, if that makes sense. So here in life, we go through a lot of emotional things. We go through divorce. We go through financial heartaches. We go through so many emotional things here in this world. Well, that's why you have your guardian angel there. You have your guardian angel there to send you positive energy, to lift you up, to send you red flags, to show you what's going to what's, what's gonna go wrong and to lead you to what's going to go right. So what I want you to know is that your guardian angel, you might not think is involved in your life, but they are. And I want to share with you, the only way that I can explain how your guardian angel works is to share with you some readings that I've done to really show you how their presence is uh, intertwined within your life. Because listen, what I've learned as a medium through all the readings that I do is that guardian angels appear in so many different ways, you guys. Guardian angels appear and send people and send pets, to be honest with you, into your life when you need help. Your guardian angel can come to you as a pet. Your guardian angel can come to you as a feeling. Your guardian angel can come to you as another person that they send into your life. So I want to share with you guys all about this because this is something that I really think you're going to be like, oh my God, this happened to me. And I wonder if it was my guardian angel. So first of all, I got to tell you, this first happened to me when I was doing a reading for a woman. She was fast asleep in her bed. And all of a sudden there was a carbon monoxide uh, issue that was going on in her house. Well, anyway, she was fast asleep, had no idea that her house was pouring gas. There was a leak in her in her uh, oven or cooktop. And don't you know that all of a sudden, her cat would not leave her alone. Her cat came up to her and was scratching at her and meowing and rubbing up against her. And the moment that she woke up out of a sound sleep, all of a sudden, she could smell the gas in her house. And she was like, oh, my God, what the hell is this? She didn't have any smoke detectors, any alarms. You know, she just let the batteries go. She lived at home by herself. All she had was her cat, you guys. And that cat saved her life. How did the cat know to wake her up out of bed? How did the cat know to come and get her? Well, it was actually funny. I know how, because when I was doing a reading for her, all of a sudden I was shown this instance where she almost died. And I was shown that she had this near-death experience and she almost passed away. and. Don't you know that her guardian angel came through to me and said, I was the one that sent your cat to get you. I sent your cat to wake you up. I protected you. It wasn't your time. And right away, she got goosebumps, you guys. And she was like, oh my God, Matt, you have no idea what happened. She goes, I almost died. The carbon monoxide was, was all in my house. She goes, my cat woke me up. Wouldn't leave me alone. She's like, it was so unlike him. She says, and when I woke up, I smelled all the gas. I got out in time. And the person who came from the gas company, the fire department said to her, that cat saved your life. Well, the cat didn't know to do that, you guys. Her guardian angel, her guardian angel actually sent that cat, her own cat, to go and alert her, right? This is how, and Ellen goes, it's amazing, right? It really is. This is the way, this is the way. Oh my God, thank you so much. Barbara's here for the first time. I'm so happy to see that. It's amazing the way, and Luna goes, I love hearing your stories of others. Luna, this is how I learn as a medium, right? I wouldn't know everything that I do unless I have a reading. When I do readings, when I have readings, I learn so much about the other side and how our angels and our guides protect us and watch over us. 
And it's actually funny because when I'm talking to certain people, right? Anytime someone is going through a hardship or a turmoil or a situation, I always have, have a reading like that, right? And it's actually funny. I was talking to Alexa and I was telling her, I forget what the hell it was that we were talking about. Someone died in a weird way. And I was like, oh my God, I remember the soul came to me. I started explaining the whole passing. And Alexa's like, how do you have a reading about everything? Well, <laughs> you know, after reading the thousands of people that I've read, you know, you start to learn, you start to learn a lot. But anyways, that guardian angel appeared to her as her own cat. You know, that guardian angel got in touch with that cat, sent that cat to wake her up and saved her life. I want to share with you another way that a guardian angel can come into your life. So this is a reading that literally, you guys, I just think about and it brings me so much inspiration because it's weird to see how our angels divinely intervene within our life, but we don't even realize it. So there was this woman who had lost her son. Unfortunately, her son had passed away and she found it very hard living life without him. She was at one of my live shows. And the moment that I read her, her son was right behind her. And what was amazing is, is that her son was there and her son was okay on the other side. But then he started to show me visions of when uh, he first had passed away and his mother went through a really tough time. She lost the will to live. She didn't... <clears throat> She lost the will to live. She didn't want to get up anymore. She didn't want to leave the house anymore. She wouldn't spend time with her friends and family. And slowly but surely, she was giving up at life. Well, all of a sudden, one day, she was going out for the mail. It was the only time she left her house. And there was a stray dog that crossed paths with her. And she grabbed the dog and brought the dog inside. And she, you know, held on to the dog, trying to find the dog's owner. Well, don't you know that this was a dog that nobody claims. All the neighbors had never seen this dog before. She doesn't know where this dog came from, but this dog found its way into her heart. All of a sudden, she found herself getting out and walking the dog. She found herself bringing the dog to the pet store, buying the dog food, getting herself out. She'd meet other dog owners. And all of a sudden, slowly but, slowly but surely, this dog led her out of her depression. And then, and then after she was finally in a good place, after she finally got her life back, the dog had passed away. Well, that dog was actually her guardian angel. Her guardian angel came in to help her out of that depression, to help her out of that slum, you know, to help her out of that, out of that uh, rut that she had been in for so long. You guys, this is how your guardian angel intervenes. So, so many times people will say to me, Matt, I don't understand. How is my guardian angel helping me? Right. Like Martha just said, I had no idea that it worked that way. Right. Well, you wouldn't know unless, you know, you have a reading and you see behind the scenes. That's why I'm sharing it with you. You know, your guardian angel can send you so many people into your life. You know, the where we get it wrong is a lot of times we see movies where, you know, a guardian angel protects us or stands in the road when a car is about to hit us or when a train is about to hit us. But it goes much deeper than that. Remember, we have our own free will, you guys. So the guardian angels can put people and things in our path, but we have to listen. For example, that first one I was talking about, her cat saved her when there was carbon uh, monoxide in the house, right? She listened to that cat. She took, when she woke up, she got up out of bed for a minute. She smelt the carbon monoxide and she saved her life based on the guidance that that cat was giving her. The second woman, you know, she was, uh, she, she was so depressed, so upset, so mad, so hurting because her son had died. And that dog came into her life and <clears throat> that dog didn't just change her. She wanted to change. Well, that's where your garden angel comes in. You know, all those signals that you're getting, those good things that you feel, that, that feeling that you get when you meet someone for the first time and instantly you know that you can trust them. That feeling that you get that warns you of something. Maybe it warns you, hey, don't take the highway today. Take the back roads. And then all of a sudden you find out that there was a huge accident up ahead. Or maybe there was a detour that had happened, right? Where all of a sudden you were late for work, your alarm clock didn't go off. You get on the highway and right up above you, right? There was a huge accident and you're like, oh my God. Have you ever had that experience where you wondered if that was me, if I was in the car, if I got on the road five minutes earlier, could I be the one in that accident, right? That's your guardian angel helping you. And Ninja Realm says, yeah, true. It's, I gotta tell you guys, it's amazing. It's amazing how your guardian angel is always there. And your guardian angel is warning you too against certain people that are going to be not good in your life. Your guardian angel is there sending you the good things that you should be doing, right? For example, 
I'll tell you that there's sometimes where it doesn't play out that way. Sometimes we don't listen to our guardian angel. I remember that there was this young boy that I was talking to who had passed away. And when, when his soul came to me from the other side, he had told me about the way that he had committed suicide here in this world. And he said to me, Matt, before I committed suicide, he said that he was going through a, de a, a tough depression. He had been in and out of doctor's appointments. His family was really supportive of him. And before he had done what he did, his, he heard a voice. He didn't know at the time who the voice was. It was his guardian angel. His guardian angel told him, go and tell your mom. Don't do this. Tell your mom. He could hear this voice clearly on, on the inside of his head, but he didn't listen. You know, this is a way that sometimes as humans, we don't listen to the guidance, the guidance that our guardian angels have for us. And when he went to the other side, he had told me that he realized that that voice was his guardian angel. And his guardian angel was there. And his guardian angel showed him all the things that would have happened if he just went and got help, right? So the thing is, and, and Tammy says, this gives me goosebumps. I can tell you, this gives me goosebumps every day, you know, connecting with these souls and seeing how involved they are within our lives. They truly want to help us. You know, the thing is, is that it's not just the big deals that our guardian angel is there. Your guardian angel is there when you're taking that, when you're taking too many grocery bags and you hear that inner voice say to you, take one at a time. You're taking too money. You're going to trip and fall. You're going to trip and fall. And the next thing you know, you trip and fall and you break your leg and you're like, I heard it. I knew it. How did I know it? Or maybe it's that, for example, there was this woman that I was reading for and she was out and she was shoveling, shoveling snow. And she, as she was shoveling snow, she could feel, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. My son's going to come home from work. He's going to do it for me. I shouldn't be out here. I shouldn't be out here. And guess what? She fell down. She broke her leg, right? I can't tell you how many readings I've had like this, where it's your guardian angel that's sending you that message. But like I said, we have free will. We have to be aware. Exactly, Vicky. We need to be aware and we have to listen. We got to listen to what our guardian angel is, is telling us, right? Because they can send us that message to protect us, to warn us, but we have to listen. And sometimes it's really hard because the warnings that they give us come in a different form. It can come where we feel it in our body. We can feel sick. We can get these almost like, I, I, I call them red flags that just come up that stop us from doing what it is that we're supposed to do. Um, so silly mom says, I always second guess myself and then I change my mind. Well, listen, that's why I'm making this video because even in the medium, there's times where it's not that you second guess yourself. It's that you don't want to listen, right? There's sometimes when my garden angel talks to me and I'm like, ah, I know better. <laughs> and I don't, right? It actually happened just the other day. I was in the car by myself and I was, I was rushing because I had to get to um, the dump. I was throwing things away. And don't you know that I kept hearing my guardian angel say, slow down. You're going a little bit too fast. You're going a little bit too fast. And I'm looking and the speed limit was 50. I'm going 55. I'm like, eh. And then all of a sudden, you guys, I slid on a piece of black ice. Thank God nothing happened. It was a quick skid. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm putting on the brakes. I'm going slow as molasses. And then I called up Alexa. I'm like, hey, there's black ice on the road. Be careful when you're driving with Royce. I took the warning. But it took my guardian angel literally getting a frying pan and slamming me over the head and saying, listen, you dummy, you almost, you, you, you almost cracked yourself up. So that's one of the things that I want you guys to know is that sometimes that's how the signs come on. Oh my God, thank you, Alan. Alan says I watch your videos every day. And I also see that um, Rama is saying that they, that they can see guardian, uh, guardian angels in the form of 1111. It's true. They send signs just like our loved ones do. But I also want to share with you another way, another divine way that your guardian angels are helping you. And this really hit home to me because this happens in my life. So I actually wrote about this in my book, you guys. And this is a story that completely changed my life. And I want to share it with you because I know, I know that it's going to make you think of your guardian angel differently. So I remember back when I was on tour, when my mom used to come with me to every single tour stop, back when we were in the car and we used to take the, the Matt Frazier SUV to all different states in all different cities. I remember my mom was down on her hands and knees, okay, like Cinderella, down on her hands and knees, scrubbing the floors like the old Italian, uh, the, the old Italian that she was. And when she went to scrub uh, an area of the floor, all of a sudden she threw her back out, you guys. And she was in pain. She like all of a sudden felt herself pull her back out and she was like, oh shit, like this isn't good. So she got up like this and my mom couldn't move. You guys, she was like, couldn't move. She had a hard time bending over. She was in so much pain. So of course, 
you all know where I'm going with this because I'm sure you have a mother or a family member like this, especially if they're an old Italian like my mother. So my mother's like, Matt, I come home. She's like, Matt, I hurt myself. I said, what happened? She says, I hurt my back. I said, okay, what were you doing? When I was down there, I was scrubbing the, the uh, she's like, I was scrubbing the baseboards. So I'm like, okay, mom, if it does, if you don't feel good, put some heat on it, right? If you don't feel good, go to the hospital. She's like, I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to go to the hospital. I'm like, you got to go to the hospital. So she's like, I'm coming on tour this week. I go, Ma, how are you going to come on tour this week? You can't even move. I'm like, because as you know, we were in the SUV, so you've got to step up the SUV. Like, you know, I'm going to have your seatbelts. I'm like, Ma, there's no way that you're going to go on tour like this. Well, anyway, she's like, I'm coming on tour. I'm coming on tour. Uh, <laughs> when she says your mother's not old. Oh, she doesn't thank you for saying that. But anyway, long story short, long story short, my mother refused to go to the doctors and then it started getting worse. And I was like, Ma, just go to the doctors. And she's like, well, what are they going to do? I'm like, they're going to give you some, they're going to take an x-ray. They're going to give you a muscle relaxer. You're going to be good to go. Bing, bang, boom, all set. I'm like, then you can come on tour. So my mother's like, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And then finally, she's like, you know what? I'm going to go. So I'm like, okay. So she goes to the doctor and I'll never forget. I wasn't there, you guys, but my mother called me. Okay. And she went, she got her x-ray done and she's sitting in, she was sitting in the waiting room of the hospital in her hospital room. And she goes, Matt, you're not going to believe it. I go, what? She goes, they just found something on the x-ray. So I'm like, what did they find? Did you break your back? Did you break your rib? Like, what could it possibly be? She goes, I don't know. We don't know yet. She goes, they found something. So I'm like, oh, so she's like, yeah. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, how's your back? She goes, I'm not in any pain anymore. She goes, my back is fine. All of a sudden, the pain from her back was gone. She's like, I can move. I can walk. I can do everything. She goes, my pain, my back isn't in pain anymore. I'm like, did they give you anything? She's like, no, the pain vanished. She's like, but she's like, they're seeing something on the x-ray. They're seeing a dark spot. So I'm like, what? So she's like, yeah. So anyways, long story short, they call her up the next day and they're like, if they send her home and they're like, hey, listen, we're going to send it to our you know, radiologist and all this stuff. They call her up the next day and they're like, you need to come back here. Like you have a tumor between your heart and your lungs and, you know, we need you in it. I remember it being like, <clears throat> I remember it was like crazy. It was like a Monday and like they wanted her in. They're like, we're going to have to, we're going to have to biopsy you and you're going to have to go in for surgery like this week. My mother's like, what? So anyway, long story short, she goes and she gets the biopsy, right? And they uh, determine that it's, that, that it's cancer. It was huge, you guys. It was growing in her for like literally six or seven years. My mom had no idea. We had no idea, right? The back pain was totally unrelated, had nothing to do with the cancer, right? So don't you know, don't you know that the doctors, they had a, a team of six doctors, you guys. It was the scariest moment of my life because I remember... She went to Dana Farber in Boston. I remember them being so nervous. They're like, we don't know how we're going to be able to, like, if this operation is going to be successful or not, because it was right between her heart and her lungs. And there was so many arteries and whatnot there that they were afraid of functioning her lung. They were afraid of, of you know, what happens if, if they, uh, if she bleeds out. Well, anyway, long story short, the operation was successful. They got out the tumor and the doctor was like, if you would have waited any longer, you would have been in big trouble or you, or you would have died. And, you know, to that day, I knew at that moment that that was my mom's guardian angel. I knew at that moment that her guardian angel alerted her and thank God, thank God she listened, right? And she went to the doctor. She could have played it off and been like, no, right? I know Catherine's saying, wow, I see that. Um, Kathy is saying that that's so crazy. I know it's absolutely, absolutely incredible, you guys, about the way that our guardian angels warn us. And thank you, Carolyn, so much for sending the hearts. And Jingles, oh, Jesus, thank God. It's true. Thank Jesus is right. Because like I said, I was never so afraid in all my life, but I knew at that moment, I knew that that back pain was her guardian angel's way of signaling her. Because as a medium, when I do a reading, you're going to know that your loved ones don't speak in full sentences. They're not like, oh, hey, Matt, I'm Josie's mom. Can you just let her know everything's good in heaven? You know, when souls come through, I feel them. I sense them. I smell them. I feel what they went through in their, in their body. And they'll alert me to certain things through certain visions and certain feelings. 
So your loved ones aren't just talking to me in that way. They're talking to you in that way as well, you guys. Pay attention to anything that you feel in your body. Take everything as a sign. It could be a sign from your loved one, from your guardian angel. It could be anything. And what I want you guys to know was this, is that your guardian angel will also send you positive signs as well to show you when you're on the right path, right? So for example, how many times have you guys been nervous, scared, stressed out, and then you see something that tells you it's going to be okay, right? For example, I'll tell you that there was a woman that I was connecting with. And when I was speaking to her, she was so afraid of <clears throat> putting her heart back out there. She was so afraid of getting into another relationship. She really wanted someone to love her, but she was afraid of getting into a relationship because she went through a terrible divorce. She was in an abusive relationship in the past and she didn't trust any man. Well, don't you know that the moment that I connected with her, her mom came through and her loved ones came through and they told her that there was love for her, that she didn't meet her soulmate yet, but it wasn't too late. She, she was going to meet her soulmate. She just had to put herself out there. She had to trust again. She had to let her walls down. You know, she had to, she had to let go of all that pain <clears throat> that she had deep within her. Well, you know, after that reading, it's actually funny because I love when people follow up with me and tell me what happens after the reading. After that reading, she really didn't listen. You know, she thought it was a great idea, but she didn't think that love was meant for her. And then it was crazy because no matter where she went, she saw images of love. Like she just was super, her, it's like her, she had this heightened awareness to everything. You know, she was at the jewelry store getting her ring fixed and there was a man next to her that was going in and proposing to his fiance, excuse me, what, what was going to be his fiance, uh, proposing to his girlfriend. He was going and getting and, and picking out a ring for her. And she felt the, his energy and felt his love at that moment. The moment she was getting her ring fixed, here's this man, you know, talking with a saleswoman, trying to get the perfect ring, talking about the girl that he was going to ask to marry him, talking about how much he loved her. And she was like, oh my God, I would love to have that within my life. And then next thing you know, she was out to dinner and the couple next to her got engaged right in front of her. And it seemed like no matter where she went, there was love all around her. It was her guardian angel's way of going and opening herself up and saying, you can have this too. Don't be afraid of this. You can have this. And I got to tell you, this happens all the time, you guys, all the time your loved ones are sending you certain signals in that way. So pay attention to what you're sensing, sensing. pay attention to what you're feeling, pay attention to all of those little things, because what you think might be just a, a hyper awareness is actually your loved ones sending you a sign. And they're all sending signs at different moments, right? Your loved ones, your angels, your spirit guide, your pets on the other side. You know, loved ones send specific signs to show you that they're near. Guardian angels send you signs when there's something that's meant for you, something that they want you to go towards. And then you also have your spirit guide that is sending you signs towards the right direction, right? For example, I'll tell you one of the cool things is, is that it has to do all with manifesting. When there's something that's meant for you, that you can bring into your life, your guardian angel and your spirit guide and all your loved ones in heaven, they really team around you to make it become a reality. Remember, they're always on your side. They want the very best for you. And if it's meant for you, it's going to just happen. If it's not meant for you, it's going to fall apart, right? And I get to tell you guys, that's one of the things that I, I strongly believe in as a medium is that if it's meant for you, it will happen like this. If it's not meant for you, it's going to be like pushing a square through a round hole. Like, you know, when you're a kid and you have the round hole and you have the square and you try to push it in, right? And it don't fit. That's what it's going to be like. It's your guardian angel. Sometimes what happens is your guardian angel and your spirit guides put roadblocks in your life, not to make you mad, not to make you upset, but to, to show you, hey, think this over. Why is this happening? Are you moving too quickly? Is this something that you really want to do? Is this something that you really want to get involved in, right? That's one of the things that I want you guys to know. And then what's amazing is, is that how many times have you looked back on your life? It happens all the time with relationships. And you're like, holy shit, I totally forced that relationship. I totally forced being with this person. I totally tried to make this person love me. I totally tried to love this person. I totally thought this was the one. And then you go back and you're like, Wow, if I would have just seen what I was doing, if I would have just seen, you know, what it was that was that was happening in the in the past, right? 
How many of you have looked back and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. How many of you have said, I can't believe how easy it was to find my husband, to find my wife, to find my significant other. I didn't realize it, right? Until I left that past relationship. I worked so hard at trying to fit, to try to make something work that never would. Well, that's one of the things that I want to share with all of you. So pay attention because those are all the ways that your loved ones in spirit are there and watching over you. Oh my God, thank you, Queenie. Queenie says you're the best. I'm only the best because of you guys. That's why I'm here with you guys live. This is the reason why I do, you know, I'm live on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube is that I love sharing with you all of this information. And if you guys haven't heard this summer, this summer, I have a book that's coming out. So many of you have been asking me, Matt, what happens when we die? You've been asking me about the life review. The life review is when we go back, we look back on our life. We see the ways that our guardian angel has helped us. We see the way that our, that our spirit guide has helped us. Well, in our new book, in my new book, excuse me, don't wait till you're dead. I'm going to be sharing with you spirits advice from the afterlife. All of these things that I talk about, about how your angels are helping you, guides are helping you, how they're pushing you away from the bad things, pushing you towards the good things. It's all here in my new book. Uh, don't wait till you're dead. It comes out this August. You can pre-order it right now on Audible, on Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, anywhere that you buy books. It's even available on Amazon. Make sure that you pre-order because I know many of you are going to forget about it. And the next thing you know, August is going to come around. You're going to be like sitting by the pool being like, oh my God, I, I really wish that I got the Matt Frazier book. Or maybe you guys are going to forget that it's even out there. So make sure you have it pre-ordered. And while you guys are all here, what I also want you guys to know is that I am back on tour, you guys. I My wife is going to F and kill me, but I'm coming to all these cities and all these states. Are these anywhere near you? I am coming. This is where you can come and meet me live and in person. So I'm coming to all these cities, all these states, and my goal is to reach all of you with a message from heaven. I'm trying everything that I can to get as many messages out that I possibly can. So here's where you can come and meet me up close and personal where I'm going to be giving live readings and I get to hug you in person. I'm coming to the villages in Florida. I'm coming to Jacksonville, Florida. I'm coming to Melbourne, Florida. I'm coming to Tampa, Florida, West Palm Beach, Florida, Worcester, Massachusetts. I'll be at the Hanover Theater. I'm coming to Red Bank, New Jersey, Englewood, New Jersey. Sacramento, California, Cincinnati, Ohio was just announced. Las Vegas, Nevada. I'll be there for two nights. Peak Skill, New York. I have nowhere that, no, I have no idea where the hell that is. Ashland, Kentucky. I'm coming there for the very first time. London, Ontario, Canada. Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, and Keene, New Hampshire. There's a couple dates that I missed. All the tour stops are up on my website, meetmattfraser.com. But what I also want you guys to know is this: is that if you want a reading with me, there's only two ways to get a reading. I haven't done private readings in years, you guys, between the television show and writing my books and my blogs and being a dad and all of these things and half the time being out on the road. There's no way that I can do private readings. But if you want to come and meet me live and in person, you can come meet me in Florida, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts. All the tour dates are up on my website, meetmattfraser.com, Las Vegas, California. I'm everywhere, you guys. I'm like poo-poo. I am like poo-poo. I am everywhere. And here's what I want you to know. Maybe I'm not coming to your city. Maybe I'm not coming to your state. There's still a way to get a reading with me. So by now, I'm sure you've seen all of the hundreds of readings that I've done online. Every single person that has gotten a reading from me on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, all those videos that you see, those are my online group readings, you guys. Everybody who is who is attended, right, only paid $22. And what I want you to know is that, take a look at this, okay? If you go to my website right now, and click on online readings, you're going to see that everything is sold out, right? December sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. January sold out, sold out, sold out. I'm doing a live class, psychic development. Me and my mom are doing that January 31st. But then look at this, February 10th, 13th, and 24th, guys. I know it seems like a long time away, but that's where you can join me, right here in this office, and I'll be doing live readings online. So if you want to connect with me, if you've been seeing all the thousands of people who have gotten readings from me, and you would like a message from your loved one, okay, you can join me live and in person on tour, or you can go to meetmattfraser.com right now and sign up for February 10th or one of those February online readings. There will not be any more online readings added for February. I only have those three dates because the rest of the time I'm going to be on tour. So that being said, I can only allow a limited amount of people. So February 10th, what did I say? February 10th, February 13th, and February 24th, they're available right now. It's $22 to sign up, but you've got to go to meetmattfraser.com. Once you sign up, 
I'm going to send you an email with your login information. Your spot is reserved. And then also you'll get another email 24 hours before, just reminding you. And then that's it. Boom. You're live with me. You can use your iPhone. You can use your tablet. You can use your computer. I see you. You see me. And it's reading after reading after reading where I connect you with your loved ones in spirit. So I really hope that you'll join me there. February 10th. It's available right now. I'm hoping that you get your spot before it's sold out. Meetmattfraser.com. Like I said, it's, I know it seems like a long time away, but I try to keep it as affordable as possible. It's $22 a ticket to sign up. And my hope is to get to you because I know that there's someone on here that really needs to hear a message, whether it be from your guardian angel, your spirit guide, your loved one, a pet. What I want you to know is that your loved ones are always there. And what I love being a medium is I'm just an antenna. Your loved ones are with you every single day. I just tell you what they're saying and how they're with you. So meetmattfraser.com. Whether you come and see me live on tour or at a live online reading, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for being on YouTube with me, Facebook with me, Instagram with me, TikTok with me, Twitch with me, Twitter with me. You guys are the absolute best. I love you so, so much. And I want you to remember that there is no such thing as death. It's just a change in worlds. So until next time, look for the signs. Remember that they are all always with you. And when you're sad, when you're upset, when you're angry, when you feel like you have no one to talk to, talk to your angels. You were born with them. They know you. They know your life. And they are there to help no matter what you're going through. So trust in the signs. I'll see you soon. And remember, there is no such thing as death. Your loved ones are right there and by your side. So I'll see you guys at the next online reading or live on tour. MeetMattFraser.com. Remember, if the dead can find me, so can you. I'll see you soon.